As we all think about our own financial stability, experts say it's important to work on your children's views of money as well. What it means to work for what you have and to budget. But how early do you begin and how transparent should you be? Evergreen Credit Union financial counselor Brenda Pollack tells Amanda that it all begins with demystifying money. I remember when my children were younger and if I said I couldn't afford something, the old saying was write a check. Now it's use your credit card or your debit card, right? Um, but to mystify that, let them know when they're old enough, let them know that if you go to work, uh, you get money. That's where money comes from. And also, when your kids are a bit older, I, rem I, rem I recommend giving them examples of if you earn X amount of dollars per hour, it will take X amount of working hours to pay for certain purchases. That said, you talk about working with them. Do you recommend allowance for children? I think allowance is a great thing. An allowance gives the kids an opportunity to manage their own money themselves. But be clear, consistent, and stick to it should you choose to give your child an allowance. If you give them an allowance for a chore, make sure they do the chore. Uh, that's a valuable lesson. And you also want to make them feel good about earning money. Uh, you want to encourage them and applaud any of their successes. And it's going to teach them to save towards bigger goals. It's going to give them that independence and the ability to control their own money and teach them fi uh, fiscal responsibility. You talk about teaching them. You have, once they learn where money comes from, you have three key principles. What are those? I believe in savings, spending, and giving. Giving them chores to earn their money is really important. And should you choose to do that, encourage your child to set money aside for themselves first. The younger they are, the more they should set aside of their birthday money or their Christmas money. But we're also teaching them something so valuable to pay yourself first. We work at Evergreen Credit Union, we're always working with people who don't even pay themselves 10%. So we're trying this campaign. We've launched this campaign to pay yourself first. If you can teach children that valuable lesson at a young age, that's going to last their whole lifetime. Uh, second, put money in a spending savings bank. So if they want those extra toys or extra things that um, that's not in your budget, let them earn the money to do that. And third, giving is one of the most important piggy banks that you could teach your children that they can make a difference. So find some charity that they like, whether it's an animal shelter, a food pantry, and let them feel the impact of what it's like to help others. It's kind of uncomfortable to talk about your budget, especially with kids, but you recommend talking about that budget, that family budget around the dinner table. I do, along with this glass jar, keep that visible so everybody can contribute to it and come up with something when the jar is full, what you're going to do about it. Discuss that with fa at family dinners. But, you know, talking about money is talking about life. Um, you can talk about minimizing some spending in the upcoming budget because of an unexpected bill. Discuss how much money that you're able to add to your emergency fund that month, uh, but always make it positive. But kids are like sponges. The goal to discuss money around the dinner table, it's a family issue and it shouldn't come with any stigma or, uh, or negativity. So the more positive you make it, the more that kids are more apt to recognize money and family and life happens. Uh, it's a great place to talk about it. It sounds like more financial institutions are actually issuing debit cards for teenagers on their parents' account. That seems terrifying to me. That, could that lead to overspending? It is actually their own account, but their parents are responsible for that account until they're 18 years old. Look, managing a debit card is a lot of responsibility, but as a parent, you are far better off to give them that lesson while they're in the protection and the safety of under your own roof versus allowing them to have no experience uh, no knowledge of how to manage a debit card, let alone a credit card, until they're 18 years old and off on their own. Here's a big topic to end with, but when comparing colleges, what should you be considering? 
with the credit unions of Maine, we used to pre-COVID um, visit with juniors and seniors and talk about putting a budget together and paying for their college education. It always sounds glamorous to say, I'm gonna go out of state for college, but the cost associated with that is much higher than attending an in-state university. Um, so we worked with students at that, at that level to talk to them and say, hey, what's the reality of going to a university in state versus going out of state? And the reality hit when they had to put a budget together and pay for those college uh, tuitions and, and college loans that they've taken out. Um, a lot of them with the choices they had made in our exercise uh, showed that their college paybacks were over $1,000. So what we do is compare the costs of in-state versus out-of-state colleges. And we do that in an exercise that gives them uh, a real life picture of what it's gonna be like. Um, so certainly we encourage students to go to school and further their education, but step back and do your homework about how you're going to pay for that education once you're done.